I am here inside the BioCrack pilot plant in the Schwächert refinery and this is Walter Böhme, head of science and innovation at OMV, picking up chopped wood pellets. But what could these have to do with innovation? Since some years we are blending biofuels in our conventional fuels. But these biofuels are based on food crops. OMV is now developing a new technology and this technology produces second generation biofuels. The BioCrack plant is a resourcefulness initiative where OMV uses its core skills to tap into alternative energy sources. It has been developed in cooperation with BDI and its goal is to develop a technology to produce second generation biofuels. But what exactly are the feedstocks for this new biofuel? We started with those pellets, but the target is to use agricultural waste like corn stava, straw and other materials. In this process, we convert the solid carbon into a liquid hydrocarbon as part of the carbon cycle. So biofuel production is a cycle, but what does that mean? I've met Gerfried Jungmeier from Joanneum Research. He is responsible for energy research and will shed some light on this topic. Using biofuel is part of the natural carbon cycle. The plant absorbs CO2 via photosynthesis from the atmosphere, fixes the carbon in the plant itself, and this plant is then converted in a refinery to a transportation fuel. And when you use the transportation fuel in your car, the CO2 is again emitted to the atmosphere and closes the carbon cycle. First generation biofuels, they are produced from food crops from agriculture using mainly starch, sugar and oil. The second generation biofuels, they use no food crops and they can be converted to biofuels too. But these technologies are under development, so the second generation biofuels are a step towards a more sustainable future. But how can I picture biocracking itself? How does it work? In this process, we convert the solid biomass into a liquid fuel. The process is a cracking process and it runs at about 400 degrees. Cracking means splitting the long molecules of the cellulosic material into small parts. Then it's similar to a diesel fuel. The final product contains up to 20% of biofuel. Here in the Schwächert refinery, we have the possibility to finish this product to a fuel according to the existing standards. I'm sure it sounds easier than it actually is, but I'm still wondering, what is the advantage for the consumer and the environment? There are two main advantages for the environment and the consumers of biofuels. On one hand, we use a renewable energy resource to produce the biofuels and it's coming year by year because it's renewable. And on the other hand, biofuels have a significant greenhouse gas reduction compared to conventional fuels. Biofuels could have a big significance in a sustainable transportation sector in the future because sustainable biofuels can be applied not only to passenger cars, you can use them in, in heavy trucks, you can use them in aeroplanes and also in ships. So the expected market volume of sustainable biofuels is quite big. This biocrack plant is the first and only one of its kind. But what are the plans for the future after the test phase in 2014? Then we should have enough data to upscale to an industrial plant. The target of the future is to integrate the biofuels production into the refinery. So OMV is the driving force behind the biocracking technology, where it's no longer necessary to use valuable food crops as biomass. My grandmother already taught me one thing about responsible behavior. Don't waste food and don't throw anything away carelessly. It's great to see this on such a large scale.